All right, so an impact is when two bodies collide in a very short period of time. Some examples of that would be like a baseball bat with a baseball, you know, pool balls hitting each other, or something like a car crash. Um, we generally categorize these into two different types, one being central impact and the other being oblique impact. So central impact would be likely as you're imagining it, where we have two bodies, let's call them A and B, and they are moving towards each other along a single line that we call the line of impact. And when they do eventually collide, let's draw them colliding here, then the plane that they actually make contact on, uh, it's referred to as the plane of impact. So the line of impact is just perpendicular to the plane of impact, forms a 90 degree angle. And uh, basically the momentum is going to be conserved along the line of impact. So if a central impact has the motion of the objects totally perpendicular to the plane of impact, then an oblique impact has some component of the motion not perpendicular to it. So let's draw that where we have A and B going in two different directions and when they collide they'll be right here. So the plane of impact is that plane that we get here that's between the actual parts of them colliding. And we would draw on the line of impact which is just perpendicular to that. So depending on the masses of these and velocities of these objects, they're going to come in like this, they're going to impact, and each one will bounce off in some direction, not necessarily exactly in line with the way that they came in, um, but they will be going in, well, depending on the interaction, they'll be going off in some, some direction. But the important thing here is that momentum will also be conserved in the y direction. So in central impact problems, we'll typically know the initial velocity of A, and we'll know the initial velocity of B, and we'll be asked to find the final velocity after impact of each body. So that's two unknowns. We need two equations. And the equations that we use are, uh, the first one is the conservation of momentum equation that we did in the last video. It is just the sum of each mass times each mass's velocity um, for state one. Let's put in a bracket here for state one is equal to the sum of all the masses and their velocities multiplied by their velocities for state two. So in this case in particular, we have MA VA1 plus MB VB1 is equal to MA VA2 plus MB VB2. The second equation is what we call the uh, the coefficient of restitution, and I will introduce this fully and go over it in the next video, but it is basically E, which is the coefficient of restitution, is equal to VB2 minus VA2 over VA1 minus VB1. Ultimately, it's really just like the relative velocity of the separation just after impact here divided by the relative velocity of the, uh, the approach for each particle or each mass uh, just before the impact. But I'll talk about that in full in the next video. But with these two equations, you're able to solve for the unknowns and, uh, and be on your way. Uh, you would need to be given information about uh, what the value for E is, but uh, again, that'll come up in the next video. And for oblique impact problems, we actually have four unknowns typically will be given. The, the initial velocity usually of A and B, which you can break down into the X and Y components. But then we'll be looking for the X and Y component of the velocity of A, that's two unknowns, and the X and Y component of the velocity of B, which is two unknowns for those velocities after the impact. So for the four unknowns, we have four equations. The first equation that we're going to use would be the conservation of momentum equation in the X direction. So along the line of impact, we have the sum of mi vi x before the impact is equal to the sum of mi vi x after the impact. So we could expand it out. It would just be ma times va x1 plus mb times vb x and then va2 x vb2 x. So this is just one equation, same as this one, this is two, so this is one. We also apply the coefficient of restitution equation for the x direction as well. And the next two equations that we need are going to come from motion in the y direction. If you in inspect either of the masses and put a little system boundary around each one like that, um, you're going to see that there's no external impulse acting in the y direction at any time on either mass. And so because of that, momentum is conserved for each particle 
in the y direction. So if we just write the expression for the momentum of A just before the impact, we have MA times VAY1, the y component of the velocity before impact, it's going to be equal to the momentum after. So it's just going to be MA VAY2. And because the mass isn't changing, then you can clearly see here that VAY1 is going to have to be equal to VAY2. You can put brackets around this if you don't like that subscript. Maybe let's do that just to show that it's, you know, momentum one and momentum two on each side of this equal sign. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing for the object labeled B. So it's going to be MB times VBY1 for just before impact is equal to MBVBY2 or just after impact. And so there we go, this is equation three, and this is equation four. So the takeaway from this video should be that for central impact problems, there are they are solvable with two equations. Oblique impact problems require four equations, all right here, two in the x direction and two in the y direction. Um, when we're using the coefficient of restitution, it's always for motion that's along the line of impact, whether it's central impact problems or just that component of oblique impact problems. So yeah, join me in the next video. I will go over the coefficient of restitution in full, talk about it, and then after that we'll run through a couple examples with actual numbers.